In today's video, I attempt to complete Grounded using only my fists as a weapon. My goals are to collect all the Burgle chips and defeat the Broodmother. Will I be able to complete the challenge? Did I mention only 5% of you are subscribed? So make sure you subscribe as it's completely free and it stops you from missing any future videos. Also, follow me on Twitch if you want to see these challenges completed live. We are on mild difficulty again, just so that the challenge doesn't take forever. I start by grabbing some basic resources, including food, and then I scan sap, plant fibre and a pebbler, as always, and begin to craft. I make a pebble axe, which I can't use to kill, but I can use to help me chop things down. I first decided to test my fists out to see how powerful they are. Safe to say, I killed this red ant with ease. Maybe this won't be as hard as I thought. I made a pebble at hammer and then headed to the red ant nest to grab the rotten bee armour and our very first burgle chip. Next, I proceeded with the main quest by taking out the lawn mites, chopping the grass, and then activating the mysterious machine to unlock Burgle. On my way to Burgle, I farmed a bunch of acorns as I planned on making acorn armour and for some acorn bits which provide a great source for food early on. Next, I headed into the Great Oak Lab and completed the button puzzle and then opened the door. I made light work of Tay's tea and then revived Burgle. Here, I was able to grab the second Burgle chip. I then gave Burgle both of the chips. As I was collecting resources to build a base, I was ambushed by a wolf spider. I died. I made my way back and grabbed my items before proceeding to build the base where we always build the base. Then I made a shovel and a lean-to so that I could sleep. Finally, before heading off, I crafted myself a weevil shield and a full set of acorn armour to protect me. The shield was essential as it was the only way I would be able to block enemy attacks while using my fists as my weapon. While killing a bunch of lawn mites, I unlocked the Lil Fist mutation, which would allow me to increase the power of my punches, making my life a little bit easier. This was one of the three mutations I would use to increase my punching power. While on my way to the hedge, I grabbed the Coupe de Gras mutation. This would help further increase the power of my punches as it gave me a 10% chance of critting on every hit. This was the second mutation I would use to increase my punching power. Then, before heading into the hedge lab, I used the web sack strategy to get the ladybug head and bombardier parts I needed to make a tier 2 axe. I was also hoping to get some stink bug parts for a tier 2 hammer, but I was unlucky. Hedge lab time. I grabbed all four pieces of the password and headed straight to the storage room so that I could grab the silk I needed in order to craft the tier 2 axe. I then used the planks that are in the storage room to craft myself a crafting table, only to realise that I hadn't unlocked the axe yet. So I headed into the lab and analysed the bombardier parts to unlock the recipe so that I could finally craft my tier 2 axe. Next, I input the password into the computer and obtained yet another burgle chip. I also grabbed the rotten gas mask and turned on the scanners around the map. Lastly, before leaving the hedge lab, I grabbed the Broodmother BLT recipe as we would need it later on to summon the Broodmother. Parkour! With the rotten gas mask I'd obtained, I headed to the haze lab. I used the infected weevils to open the door and headed inside. I scanned my hand to open the door and then headed down. I equipped my full set of acorn armour and then took out the two tears tees. I ran through the explosive death maze and unlocked the next portion of the lab. I was able to take care of all of the infected lava and infected mites. Then it was just me and the ladybug. After a long hard fought fight, I finished him off and obtained the truffle tussle mutation. This is the best melee mutation in the game, as it gives your punch attacks a chance to explode, and it is a very unique and powerful mutation. This was the final mutation that would boost my melee attack power, and I had now completed the trifecta. Before leaving the lab, I grabbed the Burgle Chip, the Brat Bursts, and the Granola Bars. I then used the remaining durability of my gas mask, to take out some stink bugs for stink bug parts so that I could craft the insect hammer later on. Next, I used a bomb to unlock the upper yard and headed straight for the termite nest. I managed to run through this no problem and was even able to make the splinter jump on my second try. I grabbed the burgle chip and then headed straight back out. This is still one of the easiest burgle chips to get in the game and it really needs to be reworked to be honest because it unlocks very, very powerful items. My next task was to head underwater, so I grabbed the Mertine mutation and took a huge risk. I tried to swim to the pond lab without a gill tube. This is extremely hard to do and requires extremely precise movement. 
It was also patched in the new Bug Strike back update as there's now a hand scanner that blocks the entrance. I managed to make it with literally zero seconds of air remaining and it was now time to employ a new strategy. Since I had no way to get out of the lab, I had to think outside of the box in order to complete it. I began killing the R car and then set my spawn point. I intentionally killed myself after setting my spawn point so that I dropped all of my items on the ground. And then I went and turned on two of the breakers and died in the process. However, I didn't lose any items doing this because I'd already dropped them all on the floor in a backpack right by the bed. Then I did the same thing to turn the third and final breaker on, which would unlock the lab for me. With the lab unlocked, I picked up all my stuff and headed into it. I logged into the computer and then proceeded to take out the three Taze T's and the R car. I then headed into the final room and took out both Taze T's. Next, I grabbed the burgle chip and finally opened the dome. Before leaving, I crafted myself a gill tube and then grabbed the diving bell spider chunk from the storage room. I then decided I wanted to use koi fish armor, so I went digging to collect the 10 scales required for the full set. I also grabbed some sunken bones as you need these for the armor as well as to craft the bone knife. Before leaving the underwater section, I grabbed the rotten slime lantern from the storage room and navigated my way through the cave in order to get the mossy key. I then used the mossy key to unlock the treasure chest and collect another burgle chip. Next, I had to break the rules as I needed another diving bell spider chunk to craft the bone dagger for one of the burgle chips later on. After collecting everything I needed, I crafted the koi scale armor and then killed some weevils to repair my shield. I then gave Burgle all of the chips we had collected and purchased some much needed upgrades, such as fiber bandage efficiency, buff lungs, advanced production buildings, and meat shield. On my way to the picnic table, I killed a bombardier beetle and we finally got a boiling gland. That meant that I could craft the insect hammer that we needed in order to collect the hot charcoal. I bombed the shovel and then proceeded to head to the exposed pipe where I was able to use the bone dagger to get the minotaur maze key. Once on top of the picnic table, I looted the field station and saw that there was food there. Usually this food would have decayed by now and it would be rotten. So I knew I was beating the game at a pretty good pace. This was a new thing I learned about the game as I never knew that this Mac and B's meal spawned here. I then unlocked the chest and grabbed the picnic burgle chip. Now that I had the insect hammer, I headed back to the upper yard and collected the four hot charcoal that I would need to craft the oven later on. This was tough without the fresh defense, but it wasn't something a few granola bars wouldn't fix. I was behind on collecting bombardier glands, so I killed a couple on the way back to my base and got two boiling glands from them. I gave Burgle the chip and then increased my max active mutations again. As I was leaving the oak tree lab, I was greeted by my nightmare. Thankfully, I was able to block its attack and get back inside unharmed. I was running low on food, so I decided to go to the Ice Caps Mint Box, as it has 20 mint shards, which each give 20% food, making them a very good food source in the game. I made my way to the Black Ant Hill and killed some Black Ants on the way, as I needed their parts to make a Tier 2 Black Ant Shield. I used the same parkour skip strategy to get into the Black Ant Lab and avoid using a bomb and looted the chest for its goodies. I made light work of all three of the Taze Tees and then analysed the Black Ant parts to unlock the recipe for the Black Ant Shield before using the crafting table to make it. The final Taze Tee was very friendly. He didn't want to hit me at all until I hit him and then all hell broke loose. I activate the computer and then looted another chest for the omelette. I set my spawn and then finished off the remaining Taze T's in order to activate the final computer, unlocking the entire lab. I bombed the glass, unlocking the boss room, and then went in and activated the computer to start the boss fight. After approximately 10 minutes of Mission Impossible style laser dodging and Jackie Chan-like punching, I finally killed the assistant manager and obtained the keycard. I used the keycard to obtain the final two burgle chips in the game, meaning we only have one objective remaining, kill the broodmother. I killed two more bombardiers as I still needed boiling glands for my oven. I got one from both, meaning I now had everything I needed in order to make the BLT. Before heading to the boss fight, I still needed one more thing to make sure I couldn't fail. The Mithridatism Mutation. This makes you immune to poison in this patch for the game. 
and thus would help me massively against the Broodmother. So I began killing wolf spiders. This was extremely difficult given the circumstances, but I managed to take out three of them here without wasting too many granola bars. I then collected the clay so that I could craft the oven, I'd forgotten this earlier, and I started cooking the Broodmother BLT which we needed to summon her. I took on another two wolf spiders and this gave me the Mithridatism mutation. This was huge for the boss fight. The four mutations I decided to go with when going into the boss fight were Lilfist, Coupe de Gras, Mithridatism, and Truffle Tussle. This maximised the damage I was outputting, but it left me very weak to counter attacks. I grabbed the BLT from the oven and headed to the boss fight. Little did I know this was going to be the closest boss fight so far, as going into this, all of my armour and my shield were on almost no durability, and I had no way to repair them. As the fight went on, my helmet broke first. Next to go were my leggings. Finally, when I was almost at the end, my chest plate broke, meaning I had no armour and a shield that was literally one hit from broken. Thankfully though, I managed to perfect block all of the attacks and eventually we killed the Broodmother, completing the challenge. Let's go! <laughs> This was way closer than I expected it to be. Make sure you leave a like if you want to see more challenge videos like this. This video gets 50 likes. I'll do this challenge again, but on woe difficulty and on the brand new Bug Strike Back update. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.